and he was excited about being, my being around. He, he heard about me and he wanted, he wanted me to be there at the venue. Welcome you back to Lajubom Wash TV. I don't have violence for you today. To be full of religious gossip. And the boys will leave the fight for Mohammed. What is happening in the Christian door? Turn down to make sense with Lajubom. We talk today about the ministry of angels. The average believer does not even have an idea of the ministry of angels. I'm not just talking of someone who is inclined to the prophetic and can see them or see the similitude. An average believer, in spite of the fact that they were sent, the Bible talks a lot about them. The average believer has no idea. Look at this. When Gabriel appeared to Mary, Mary was not surprised at the angels. She was surprised at the salutation. Come from your grace. But when you allow God to lift you. Listen, Koinonia, I'm teaching you something. Run away from the quest for vain glory. Sometimes men will try to do it. Stop it! I was rebuking some of these, my young people that I help at, at times. I saw some of them and when I see them among their contemporaries, I see them standing. I say, you are already learning this nonsense. I remember someone here, he used to be here. I looked at him one day and I said, come and stand here. He came and I said, you are soon going to fall. I see pride eating you up. It is this little, I am Apostle Joshua Selman, a great man of God. What is the achievement? Oh, someone is shouting while I'm preaching. Someone is falling while I'm preaching. Congratulations. But this will not bring the glory and the power of God. There is a demonstration of the reality of heaven on earth that will happen before Christ comes. They call the apostles Zeus and Hermes. When you study classical Greek mythology, these were gods that came as a result of the aberration of these spirit beings with women. Let the power of God begin to move in a meeting. And you see the way men of God, their body is itching for mic. Everybody wants to hold a mic. When the service is over, somebody comes to pick a mic and say, hold on, give me E. We are, we are not done. The, what God is doing here. All those things, we think there are signs of spiritual maturity. There are signs of childishness. Childishness. We went for a meeting in Yola. We are going to pray. It was a crusade in Yola. And I was ministering alongside God's servant, Dr. Paul Enenche. I know that that's a great man. I've seen God honor me. But that's a father in the faith. God has lifted him. I will not sit down and begin to compare my ministry. It will be stupidity of the highest order. He's older than me. God has honored him. God has lifted him. He has become a model to the body of Christ. I know what many of us will do. You will try to make sure you snap with him. And say, I've shared the stage with men like uh, so on and so forth and so forth. And you, you just think to yourself. You can ask the protocol. I remember his, his head of protocol was communicating with Victor. And he was excited about being, my being around. He, he heard about me. And he wanted, he wanted me to be there at the venue. Right? He was actually coming for his own crusade, Dr. Paul. And then he, he was also to minister where I was ministering. It was a campus crusade. And this is what the protocol said. The night I went for the meeting there, the power of God was awesome. I mean, mighty things, miracles upon miracles. And I knew that the people respect me. They respect me so much. And if I came there together with Dr. Paul Enenche, they will want to honor Dr. Paul Enenche, but they will not want to dishonor me. So they may try to create the same platform. And I rejected. I said, I'm not going. I said, I'm not going for the meeting. You can ask the head of protocol. They said, no, no, no. I should come around. You'll be wonderful. I said, I am not going. I told them we're not going anywhere. Let the servant of God receive the honor due his sacrifice. We will come in the evening and finish the meeting. Many of you will not do that because you are looking for platform. One day I went somewhere and one guy just came and stood near me like a thief that we should snap. He's a pastor. I was just looking at him. Because he will use my picture and take it to his ministry and say we ministered with men like uh, this person, apostle was there and, and think that snapping the picture is an endorsement of his ignorance and carelessness. Humility 
entails that you consciously reject certain things. Not every open door was opened by God. You need to know if the timing is right to enter it. I'm shaking off what you have called Christianity and opening you up to a new dimension of hunger. That you are not just praying because you want to find a sermon so that your contemporaries will think you have revelation. There is a hunger that can drive you to say, God, there has to be more. I am tired of this. In the southeast, in Enugu state, Lord, there has to be a portal of revival that is broken within this city. To the point that people go to God only when charms fail. I hope you know that for the average believer, going to God as the first port of call is not it. The moment people are in trouble, they honestly say, Lord, I love you. I have not denounced you. I am only being wise. Wisdom is profitable to direct. Hallelujah. Don't think because a door is open and you want to enter. No. Sometimes God can say no. Your level has not gotten to this. Although the door is open, stay quiet. Is God speaking to us? This happens in every area of life. That's why many of us will never rise. There are ladies here, you love God. But the day God gives you an opportunity, you'll be amazed at the pride and arrogance. And God is watching. How you are disqualifying yourself and allowing this ancient stumbling block of pride to stop you from stepping into the next level. There are many of you, if... If you were the ones who were privileged to stand where I'm standing, you see crowds of people inside and outside. There will be one pier to clean your left shoe. There will be another pier to clean your right shoe. Are we together? There is the one who, he will not just give you an handkerchief, you will put your face like this and he will clean it. That's what kills men. Years ago, in your campus, years ago, Many people who have been there long ago will tell you there were many pastors on campus. Ministry. I mean, somebody will have five members, three PAs, two ladies, one guy. I want to go on TV ministry. You see people holding box as if they are bankers. What are they doing? I am prophet this. I am apostle this. I am. I remember one pastor came and met me and said, Man of God, what is this? your grace? You need to go on air, go on radio. Many of those people, some are not even in ministry till now. Some are still roaming around, wondering what to do. God himself opposes the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. I was counseling a gentleman, maybe he's here with his mother. And the mother said something and the boy just shouted at her. Ah, my name is Joshua Selman. I turned to that boy and I landed it on him. I said, apologize to mama immediately. Otherwise you have subtracted your years in life. The Bible says, he that dishonored his father, he said his, candles will be, his candle will be taken and will be left in obscurity. Honor. Humility. I prayed for people with HIV, they were not healed though. I prayed for people with cancer, many died. I prayed for people who were buried. I even felt the anointing, absolutely nothing happened. I prayed for people on wheelchair, they spoke about me, a mighty man of God. And when I went to those homes, I saw that they had faith. And yet I prayed, I called on Jesus and nothing happened. People will come to me and say, I'm trusting God for this. And I'll pray for them. In the name of Jesus. And I see them one year later. Absolutely nothing has happened to them. I said, Lord, I can't be a preacher like this. This is the kind of state that will make you envious, angry. You will fight yourself and fight every other person. When you don't have results. Either you bring me to the reality of this substance. I cannot be preaching things that I don't have the grace to defend. God is this. God can do that. I speak over people. In the name of Jesus, may your life change. They say amen and nothing happens. True desire. A man having separated himself there is a requisite level of hunger that brings God to you. When you casually cross your leg and say, God, I'm in need of you. As if you are calling your mate, you will never find him. He hunger is a magnet. 
there is a way your hunger can, can reach the heavens and God knows you mean business with him I got to a point where I was dissatisfied with church not in a negative way I said if the sick continue to be sick what if the person sick is now my relative there has to be a way out the more I read my Bible I was I, I, I was I was almost confused something is wrong people would call me and say pray for me they said you are a great man of God and yet absolutely nothing will happen and listen men of God I say this with all due respect you have to love God enough to throw away your ego or just keep telling them you don't have faith because the truth is those people have faith the fact that they came to you when a patient meets the doctor he has done his own part the remaining is the professionalism of that doctor 